Hey, what's going on, everyone? Sly here with Flo. Flo, a little out of breath, man. Hitting the mitts right now. Man, I'm the one hitting the mitts. You don't want the shirt off. And the girls all looking at you, man, trying, trying to move the mat. Oh, man, that, something ain't right, dog. Something <laughs> ain't right. But anyway, man, we're here talking about Malik Collins. And I was looking through Twitter, and I think the biggest thing I've seen um, from Twitter these past three days was your boy Emmanuel Ocho coming out there Ocho. and he say what you want about this guy this guy actually watches a lot of film like he's one of the only pundits out there that like he's in like the lab watching these guys and i just want you guys to see what he said about uh, our new acquisition let's check this out real quick the Niners Malik Collins signing, let's talk about it. It's sneaky, but it is huge. As great as the Niners linebackers are, linebackers can only be as good as the defensive tackles. The defensive tackles have to do a great job of keeping offensive linemen off of the linebackers. What I mean by that, if a defensive tackle is talented enough to hold up two offensive linemen, that allows Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw, now Eric Kendricks, the ability to run free. If the defensive tackles aren't good enough to eat up two offensive linemen, then rather than double teaming the defensive tackle, one of the offensive of lineman is working up to the linebacker right now. What Malik Collins does, he has enough weight, as a coach would say, he ain't lighting the ass. Pause. He has enough weight to make sure that the offensive tackles have to handle him first, which means Fred Warner can run freer. Javon Hargrave is a beast, but remember, Javon Hargrave a little bit lighter. He's a better pass rusher defensive tackle. Malik Collins, not only is he stout enough to support the run game, but also think about what Malik Collins does from a consistency perspective. Defensive tackles for the Niners they be getting hurt. Now you got a dude who's played 16 games, started 16 games, 15 games, 16 games, 16 games. He's only 28, 29 years of age, and he's been in the league for eight years already. He is an absolute force. It's a sneaky signing, but it's a huge deal for the Niners. All right, man. So he had a lot of good things to say. It's a sneaky pickup, man. What are your thoughts on this? And do you agree? Yeah, man, I like it because I like what Ocho says. Like you said, he's actually one of those few guys at FS1 who actually really kind of looks at the tapes and understands, like, it's not just about who you like, dislike. He, he really goes and studies the film and sees what they could produce. And I like what he said, like, this guy is legit going to upgrade our freaking defense. No offense to Eric Armstead. He was solid. Yeah. I'll give Eric Armstead that. There's just something about Armstead. He can never get to like that next level where like, you know, playoff time comes and you know this guy's gonna elevate to that next level. He would always give you pretty much he's always gonna give you like a C grade, you know? I think this guy has a chance to freaking worst case B B kind of grades, you know, out there making that kind of impact. But from the film I've seen, man, I like this guy, man. He seems like he's hyper aggressive. He just wants to get to that damn quarterback. But I just think I just feel that he's gonna uh elevate our defense even more. Because this guy looks like he's just one of those beasts, you know? Like, you don't want to line up against this guy. It looks like he doesn't care who's in front of him, if it's double teams or whatever. He's going to try to make anything happen. He wants to get to that damn quarterback. And I like guys like that, where their motor is just nonstop. They're going to keep coming at you the whole entire game. And that's something I felt like Armstead. Sometimes he would gas out a lot. Obviously, we'd have mm -hmm. to have Kinlaw come in there at times. Because his motor just wasn't like this guy. I believe this guy is going to be the real deal. But what do you think, man? Yeah, you know, I agree with you. Uh, I do. I would give Armstead more of a B minus because he did have a sack in the Super Bowl. And remember 2019, that interception that Fred Warner got, that was because oh, of Eric sorry. Armstead. Yeah, so I give him that. But there are games, like the NFC Championship game against the Rams, he had zero, he went over, he had no tackles, no sack, no pressures, nothing. But I give him a B minus. I, I like Armstead. I just never wish we got rid of Buckner. Yeah. I would have rather kept Buckner than Armstead. It was that was a no brainer. But uh, uh, talking about Collins, though, I 100% agree with Acho, man. I think this is such a sneaky ass pick. Uh, he's up there's comparable pretty much the same numbers as Armstead, man. I think this year he had more sacks. I think he had what, five sacks this year, the most in his career, but he gets those pressures. I know two years ago, I think he was top five in pressures for defensive tackle. So this guy has been on it, man. And this year he had another solid season, 28. So 28, probably in his prime, you know, younger, two years younger than, uh, your boy Armstead. So, I mean, that's a good thing. So I like what I see out of this guy. I don't want to, uh, people to get pissed off at me. But to me, the way he uses his arms, both his arms, he reminds me a little bit of Reggie White. I know Reggie White was on the outside, but the way he's able to thump his arm with power and just have people just go flying, 
Like he's he's a dog, man. This dude is an absolute dog. So I love what I see. I see a little bit of Reggie White in him. You know, obviously not as powerful as Reggie, but he's he's up there, man. And he has a bit nice ass spin move, which I love doing that from the inside. You know, someone that has a spin move, big ass full, what three hundred plus pounds, and still able to uh, be light on his feet. I like it, man. I really see him. And I love it. Originally, we were hearing that it was supposed to be originally Eric Armstead for Malik Collins. Yeah, and it yeah, didn't fall, go happen. And so I don't know what happened. They're always, always just give you a seventh and we'll call it a day. <laughs> and, and I guess it worked out. You know, uh, Hunter went to, over there to uh, Houston. And so I guess we got the, uh, <laughs> this dude in. I love it, man. I think it's a big pickup. I think it's pretty much it's even, man. It's even because Armstead, 30, I, think, I don't know if he's going to be 31 by the end of the season. But um we would got younger and a lot cheaper too, you know, and we're able to get other guys out there. I don't like the other pickup. The other guy we got, um, Jordan Alley. I don't think that was a good pickup at all. I know it's a lot of Niner content creators are saying a lot of good things about him, but what I saw, I just, I didn't like it. I didn't like the fact that Cleveland Browns YouTubers combined together were just ripping them saying, yeah, we're glad his ass is gone. So I don't like that. How they said pretty much he's Kinlaw 2.0. Uh, but I love this pickup, man. I think this right here could be the difference between us, you know, being in the hunt again for that Super Bowl and us, you know, failing. So uh, what a sneaky pickup, man. We we needed it. Like we needed something like this to happen. And, you know, John Lynch, he pulled through at the end. So I got to love it, man. Yeah, man, it is a big pickup because, man, if, had we not got this guy, that hole that Armstead oh, was going to be leaving, we were pretty much screwed. Yeah. So for John Lynch to go out there and, and get this, like you said, a little bit cheaper too, and like you said, entering his prime, that, that's that's a steal, man, at the end of the day, because there was no way, our, obviously, Armstead was coming back after. He didn't want to restructure. So we needed to go out there and find somebody solid. And this guy, it looks like he's the truth, man. Uh, as far as you're saying about Ali, it almost seems like we replaced both guys with pretty much like almost like a mirror image of each other almost like that spider-man meme it seems like these guys are pretty much comparable if not a little bit better than what we had already hey, excuse me i think he's gonna be 29 when the season starts but one thing i do love about him he's able to take on those double teams just like armstead armstead was able to do to that and this guy you see the same thing he holds that damn leverage he doesn't care if two guys are on him he's gonna stay there he's gonna fight you know a crack scratch claw whatever it takes to do that and one thing is uh i really love is that if he say he doesn't perform well he's not going to get that last year of the contract that 10 million so you know this offseason his ass is going to be training like no other because no one he's never going to get bigger money than he is that that last year on his contract so he's got to go out there kind of be like i remember when charles man who you were seeing on ig i told you he's gonna have a big ass season he yeah. was training three times a freaking day because he knew he had to get that back and he proved it man he absolutely proved it so i think he's gonna be doing the same thing he's probably going on vacation a little bit during the off season but after that man his ass his agent's gonna be like dude we need you to have another big ass season because you cannot get rid of that 10 million dollars because niners could cut him and uh, have to pay nothing so that's absolutely good that's good that's motivation you know you want that motivation that these players have to have in order to get that last year in that contract so i think it's huge man i think it's absolutely huge what's going on and uh gotta give john lynch credit gotta give him credit because a lot of times in the past man with other gms they just let it go man ah whatever you know we'll try to replace him in the draft or not nah, they replaced them right away and they save money able to get other dudes too so uh, i like what they're doing man yeah man likewise john lynch big pickup and i like the fact that this guy for the most part has been pretty healthy yeah the one thing about armstead he kind of was skidded dealing with that injury bug towards the end yeah. of his tenure with us. We Obviously, we got him during the playoffs back, but how many games did he miss last year? A lot. A lot. Yeah. So it was like, damn, this guy's out of the lineup so much. We had Kinlaw in there, Ricky, and pretty much starting for majority of that season. So it is good to go younger and a little bit healthier, too. And I think that plant, what, plantar fasciitis, mm -hmm. whatever the heck it's called, that's, that's going to happen. That's going to be a lingering all through the rest of his career. It's going to get worse, man. I was reading up on that thing a little bit. And I was hearing people like, dude, it gets worse. Like, it doesn't get better. It gets worse, especially when you're putting that much force on your body. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, just, I think, it's smart, man. We had to pull the trigger in uh, because you're not going to really count him. He's getting older, too. So, I mean, it sucks and all. I At the time, I didn't like it. But the fact that we got this pickup, man, I'll take that to the bank every day. The only thing that does suck is that $15 million next year in cap hit. But I guess you live and you learn. Just move forward. All right, well, you guys, let us know in the comments what you guys think about Acho's take. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. See y'all next time. Peace. Peace.